Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Hey everyone, welcome into the arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. This is episode 147. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbase Carl. How you guys doing? Got the coffee in you again. And uh, Carl, is there any flooding out there in Buffalo? I, I heard that there was some flooding out in like New York City. Yeah. No, I don't even think it's raining right now. So okay. we're all right. Yeah. Burley, how about you out there in Toronto area? It's fine. We we got okay. a little rain last night around okay. seven thirty. It started raining, but okay. nothing. It was like just a little light drizzle. I see. Yes. He's got acid rain because it's you know a wasteland <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> yeah, acid rain. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, out here in Japan, I mean, uh, we've been setting record temperatures for the end of September. It was like thirty degrees yesterday still oh wow yeah i mean uh you know like in, in the 90s you know with like 90 plus percent humidity it was crazy <sighs> yeah really crazy i mean yeah it's just a global warming at its best and just continuing on i mean october usually the weather starts to cool down so the the forecast is that next week it's supposed to to come down to maybe 24 25 so you know a significant drop in the temperature so hopefully that's the the case but for video gaming boy it's starting to heat up guys because october we're getting we're getting uh you know ready for october now and we got a whole slew of big games that are coming up of course towards the end of the year the holiday season's coming so we got a big show for you we're going to be talking about jim ryan he's leaving playstation i'm going to talk about that uh talking about star wars jedi survivor there's going to be a sequel to that game so it's it's going to be a trilogy after all uh, so we're also going to talk about the Cyberpunk 2.0 update, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, uh, Horizon, a complete edition is coming, uh, cloud gaming going to the MetaQuest, and, uh, and then our topic of the show, historical settings and games, our favorite games with really awesome historical settings. We're going to be talking about that, of course, with the imminent uh, launch of Assassin's Creed Mirage that's coming our way. So a lot of stuff to talk about in this episode, of course, and uh, our picks of the week as well. 
But before we get into what we've been playing and all of that and into the weekly news beat, here is a brief word about where you can find our podcast in video and audio formats. Before the crew discuss what they have been playing, this episode of The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast's ad-free version in audio and video formats, will be going to Patreon after being recorded. So if you would like to support the show and become a patron at the entry tier one level at $1 per month and get every episode, including exclusive ad-free post-show content in video format when recorded, please visit patreon.com slash the arena productions for further details. The audio version of the podcast will be uploaded to all free podcast services where you can find us on any podcast app for iOS or Android. And in the video version, it will be on our YouTube channel, The Arena Productions. For the audio version, just download your favorite podcast app and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like, if that feature is available there, and spread the word about the podcast. We also have a Discord called The Arena Productions, where you can join and chat with the Arena Productions community, and the podcast audio website is at thearenapodcast.podbean.com where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. For all information regarding the podcast and our entertainment and pop culture related content, along with our blog and forums, visit the official website of The Arena Productions at www.thearenaproductions.com. Finally, you can also follow us on Twitter at The Arena, A-M-P-G-N-P, as well as on Instagram at The Arena Productions. Now, back to the show. Okay, guys, uh, let's talk about the games we've been playing this past week. I don't know if you guys have gotten any farther into Starfield. And of course, if you, all of you viewers and listeners, if you did not see our show last week with our special guest, Lord Cognito of uh, Last Stand Media's Defining Duke and Iron Lord's podcast, please check that out because we talked a bunch about Starfield in last week's episode. So, uh, yeah, I played a little bit more of it. And uh, Burley, because we did the extra take episode, which I'm going to be talking about later with Sea of Stars. Played a little bit more of Sea of Stars. But uh, my question to you guys, have you made it farther into Starfield? Go, go, go. Well, Burley, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> I, I played like one night more since we last talked. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Unfortunately, like. Yeah. That's kind of the only night I've played any video games. And then I, one day I play like a little bit of Sea of Stars because okay, I kind of like just, I don't know, like Starfield, I, I don't have the time right now. And yeah. it's hard because like I can't really enjoy the game kind of the way I want to. Yeah, And I was yeah. like, I just want to play something more linear. <laughs> so okay. I saw my back to Sea of Stars. Like, I just want to make like progress in something, like feel like I'm going yeah. forward and so at the yeah, you, you have all of these things going around, uh, going on around you that kind of gets in the way. I, I completely understand. I mean, that mm -hmm. that that time in your life right now where, you know, you're 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 trying to put aside time for gaming. Then, of course, you got your job. And then, of course, you got your 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 child that you have to, you know, take care of and, and all that yeah. other family There's stuff. Also the house, so, like, yeah. you know, yeah. working on getting the house ready to move yeah. in. So, yeah, well. Well, hopefully, once you've moved in, you got all that taken care of, then you'll have a little bit more time to to, to, really to so. play some games. So, Burley, how about you? Uh, did you get any farther in Starfield, or uh, what? What have you been playing this past? Uh, Starfield, no, I haven't gone back to it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I have been playing. I played the Resident Evil Four remake, the Ada DLC, the separate ways. Oh, okay. And I gotta say, like, it is good mm -hmm. that. I still am not a fan of Capcom holding this DLC out okay. and being like, hmm, we put the game out in April. Mm -hmm. We're going to put the DLC out in September. So this mm -hmm. way, this game gives it bring back buzz and we can get a little bit more money out of people because this should have just been part of the game. Because mm -hmm. anytime you ever buy Resident Evil 4, even if you bought it on the PS4, PS3, Right, Xbox One, Xbox 360. You got this DLC that because it was originally an add-on that they had for when the game came off the GameCube to the PS2 and everything. Right. So mm. it's like they're 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 just doing that model again, just because it is Capcom. They know they can sell it to their audience. Yeah. If you're, it is a fun DLC, but honestly, wait. Like it's only like fifteen dollars here in Canada. Mm -hmm. You just wait a few months. You'll be able to get it for like a couple bucks. Okay. Wait till then. It's because if you know what you're doing in your typical Resident Evil thing, you could you can beat it very quickly. Okay. Okay. Seems right. at least reasonably priced. So. It, it's it's reasonably priced, but it's it's still just a matter to me of this should have been included day one. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. So those are the games that we've been playing. So let's go ahead and jump into the weekly news beat, guys, because we got a lot of stuff to talk about in this episode. So first off, Jim Ryan, he's leaving. He's leaving PlayStation. He's stepping down. A successor has yet to be named. So this is from the article uh, uh, over on Digital Trends. I'm going to go ahead and uh, read a little bit of it for you. Uh, plans are already in place to fill that gap when Jim Ryan leaves, according to a press release from Sony. Sony Group COO and CFO Totoki Hiroki-san will be stepping into Ryan's role as an interim CEO while continuing his role with the Sony Group. During that time, he'll work with Sony Group Corporation Chairman and CEO Yoshida Kinichiro song to, quote, define the next chapter of PlayStation's future, end quote. That will include naming an official successor to Ryan. So Jim Ryan has been working with PlayStation since 1994 when he joined Sony Interactive Entertainment Europe. Since then, he's become the key figurehead for the PlayStation brand, similar to Phil Spencer's role within Xbox. His most recent success has come from the launch of the PlayStation 5, which has already surpassed a 40 million unit milestone. Today, Sony announced, or uh, of course, uh, when this article was uh, uh, released, that Ryan plans to retire from the role. So, you know, a lot of people out there are talking about, was he was he forced out? You know, with all this stuff going on with the acquisition, you know, the acquisition of, of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft and the things that came out and what he was saying and stuff. He, obviously, he's saying that it's it's a logistical thing. Because he lives in Europe, he lives, I'm sure he lives in the UK, and, and he has to travel and work in the United States. So he's saying it's it's just, a, it's a burden on me logistically, so I've decided to step down. But there's a lot of people out there saying that, man, he was pressured to leave. He was forced, forced out. Um, what, what are your guys' thoughts? Uh, Burley, I'll start with you on this one. I, I, I don't believe in the conspiracy theories in this one. He is getting up there in age and having to do the commute between the UK and and the US all the time, yeah. doing that for how many years and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. he's been in there for quite a while. So it's like, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that of, hey, he's like, how much longer do I want to keep doing this and all the stuff I have to do? make the shareholders happy and, you know, keep doing this and that mm -hmm. I'm sure he's been done for a little while and just said, okay, I'm done. After all this stuff, he's like, yeah, I'm done. I can't keep doing this. Okay. Okay. Carl, your thoughts. Uh, I mean, it is fun to, to think, you know, that he might've been pushed out. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think we're ever going to know if that's right. yeah. it's possible. You never know. Like things leak nowadays, <laughs> but we could yeah. find time. But, um, you know, it's a little suspicious timing wise. I mean, this is within a week of the UK giving the preliminary approval of the Activision Blizzard you know, acquisition, something that he was very much heading up the charge of trying to stop. Mm -hmm. um, you just said that. So he's a, he's not going to be gone officially until when? Like be, until know, March of 2024. Okay, March, next year, right? Yeah. So yeah. And mm -hmm. then there's going to be an interim person in his place. Is that yes. before or after he leaves? So like it kind of just tells me that they yeah. they didn't really have time to to find someone. Like it doesn't seem a hundred percent planned. And maybe he did just decide on his own to well, leave at this point uh, without so really being. Uh, you know, planning it that far ahead with them. Well, supposedly Totoki song is going to be taking over now. Which that's, that's kind of a red flag to me mm -hmm. um, that he needs to immediately take over. You know? Yeah. It's like know. the transition period. Ryan's going to be there still, but he's yeah. going to be taken over. Uh, and then after Ryan leaves, he will still remain until they find the successor. So that's 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 oh, what's really? going okay. on. Yes, yeah. that's what's going on. So yeah, maybe he did just spring this on them as like you know things have not been. I would say things have not been great for him. Obviously because of the travel, I think that's that's a legit thing. But also I think public sentiment against him is really bad. Yeah. And this deal that he was very strongly trying to stop not going well. I I, I could see maybe he's just like all right, like this is my time to go. 
like this is my out like i don't i don't want to do this anymore this is just really hard yeah i mean during his tenure prices pretty much on everything went up uh and uh i mean yeah he's been there through all the successes and all um especially being with you know playstation europe um but the question now is you know of obviously his legacy you know the mark on the playstation brand obviously 30 years that's that's a, a great achievement but the question now is who is going to take over when totoki song uh you know finds someone else to take over that person that's the big question and what is the the roadmap for playstation moving forward me personally i would go back to the PlayStation four generation when they were just the, the, like, uh, like I said last week, they were just pumping out so many games and the marketing was just, uh, just rolling. And, and Shuhei Yoshida was a big part of that. I would give the reins to Shuhei song. I would give the reins to Yoshida song because he knows what's going on. He knew the success right now. He's the head of the indie division which is bringing in games, but still I, I, I would give it to him uh, because he knows both sides. He knows the Japanese side. He knows the American side of the, of the, the, the structure of PlayStation. So that would be my choice. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, mean, I have doubts that it's going to be anyone that we can predict. Like it, it'll, you know, there doesn't seem to be anyone in the, in the organization that seems like, the uh you know heir apparent mm -hmm. um i would hope that it's someone who uh is closer to the actual gaming side like who who knows games who plays games you don't have to be like uh, phil spencer is a rare breed of like ceo who's like a real gamer mm -hmm. um, that's you know i can't i can't really expect that but i mean he's got to be someone who's like very at least very familiar with the products not yeah and that's you like you know, that's yoshida song i think yeah. i mean because he plays the games he's really into them so and yeah. he knows the you know he knows the system he knows what goes on there but yeah. he it's weird he would be weirdly... he would be a great great choice he would be a great yeah. choice to to bring in it is weirdly like we are only three years into this generation mm -hmm. um so he's leaving at an odd point like we're not i wouldn't say we're halfway through the generation you know, yeah. so uh, it doesn't seem like a place you would typically leave. But, uh, you know, again, this stuff just doesn't happen like any time you would normally expect. There's no there's no real like pattern anyway. But, you know, I think it's good. I think it's good that he's leaving. I don't think he's been good for PlayStation. Uh, you know, business wise, sure, they're doing well. But I don't I think anyone could have done that after the success of, of the PS4, like just sort of coasting on what they've done and the plans that are sort of set in place going from ps4 to ps5 mm -hmm. um, i don't know what i would directly attribute to him as as something that he really pushed for i mean maybe putting more games on pc which i think is good uh yeah, yeah it, it's hard to say what you could attribute to his tenure <laughs> as leader here because it's just like the 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 pc games uh playstation games coming from to pc like the insomniac ones it's been like insomniac has said no we've been trying to push to get our games to pc for years so i, I can't even don't want to even attribute that to jim ryan i don't think that's him him yeah. or if it's him doing it it's him like fine we'll do it Kind, yeah, kind, kind, kind of kind of kind of mentality I'm gaining like yeah I I have to agree with you Carl he did have it was an easy layup it was because Sony had a great PS4 generation with the Indies and the first parties and all the stuff and just people going in it was an easy thing to PS5 is like you keep you stay the course of what you did in the PS4 generation you you will get the people to come back for PS5. Yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like PS5 generation does feel like, in a lot of ways, like PS4.5, right? And I'm not <laughs> not in a negative way at all. Like, just mm -hmm. just in a way of, like, it's, yes, yeah, a continuation of what they did. 
they haven't really changed much. They they didn't really need to, right? That wasn't obviously like why would they? You know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the the thing we're seeing now, though, and do we attribute this to him? And and can will he then be blamed for it while he's already gone? Is the games as a service push? Um, I I think he I think he has quite a bit to deal with it, but I don't think he's the only one. I'm sure there's some executives and all that being like oh my god look at how much Fortnite makes and all these other games right, of service though right. the, the the five that you know just print money and then you know there's the 300 that no one talks about because they do nothing it's going to be interesting in this next year because totoki song i mean he's like a general corporate guy you know and he probably doesn't know too much about you know, the gaming aspect of things. I mean, I don't think he's a true gamer himself. So it, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Uh, Herman Holst is another person that might actually, you know, step mm -hmm. in. Um, that's that's another uh, person. But yeah, I, I, I'll i say it again. I think Shuhei. I mean, because he's, you know, he's personable. Everybody loves him. I mean, he would be he would be perfect for the PlayStation brand. I mean, to to put in charge of it. Whether he would accept that, you know, because that's a lot of pressure. Uh, oh. We would we would see. But uh, I mean, he speaks fluent English, so I mean, and uh, you know, he's done lots of interviews with the gaming media. You know, like I said, he's well respected. I think he'd be the perfect person. We, we shall see. But yeah. I mean, he'd be a good choice, but what was he yeah. before this? Wasn't he? Didn't he have a higher position, and then they kind of moved on to to the indie thing for some reason? I don't know why. Like he sort of stepped down. Well, yeah. He well, he was he was. I think he was kind of like the number two in a sense. Uh, you know, when it came to uh, you know Layden, Sean Layden. I think he was kind of yeah working behind him in a sense, but uh, yeah, I think uh, he was coming back and forth between Japan and uh, you know in the U.S. So uh, yeah, I mean yeah, he was one of the probably like the number two. Okay, he was the president of SIE Worldwide. Okay, there you Studios. go. Yeah, there yeah, you go. yeah. Okay, thanks for that call. <laughs> so yeah, yeah he was he was way up there. So, yeah. You know? yeah, so. Hey, there, you know what? There was one gaming person that was from another co company that that did retire from one mm -hmm. that could come back. Get Reggie in there. <laughs> Reggie, <laughs> yeah, Reggie. Yeah. Reggie. Well, it's like uh, yeah, Carl. Yeah, that got would the, just. I, I think got the Pokemon I think that would Nintendo break the. On, so there you go. Yeah. I think that <laughs> would break the internet if that happened, and like Bring I could Reggie just imagine there. Nintendo. I think they would. Uh, for, if, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong here with Japanese culture. They they'd be they would be very slighted if yeah, Reggie yeah. did that, and yeah, yeah. they would go petty and they would go for revenge. Uh, no, I don't mm -hmm. think. Well, because Reggie was a Nintendo of America, so I mean that's because yeah, it's a different mm -hmm. different corporate culture out there. But yeah, but I yeah think this is yeah. a great opportunity for PlayStation. Um, you know, there's no love lost for for this guy. Like. Jim Ryan is just not, he's nobody's favorite, you know, executive Drug. for PlayStation, right? Uh, if you're on the, the, the Xbox side, he's the butt of numerous jokes for, you know, a lot of gaffes and just like, you know, not really understanding gaming very well. Like, he, it, rightly so, being, you know, criticized and, and poked fun at for those type of things. Yeah. Um, and like we talked about, there isn't anything that we can really, I would say, attribute, like we can say is his contributions to PlayStation uh, this era. So, and there, there is a lot, I think, of like PlayStation, I just feel a little rudderless right now. Uh, you know, they're not, they're, they're not in trouble in any way, shape or form. Obviously, they're selling consoles. They have games coming. But the future does seem a little like, what do we got? You know, what's coming, you know? It's a big question mark. Uh, the the games as a service mark. thing is no, something that nobody is really excited for. Well, uh, as far first you know, party next year. I mean, it's that's the big question mark. What do they have next yeah. year? First party, and so so they 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 can you know they can hire somebody who will really excite and energize you know the base, and yeah. that can be more of a face for the brand. 
hopefully, um, yeah. and hopefully bring some, you know, fresh, you know, ideas that come from, you know, a gamer's aspect side. Yeah, you can only I hope, just, right? I don't, I don't see that though. I mean, because you know, Sony, you know, <laughs> the Japanese company, they're probably going to hire from within. So, like I said, you know, well, yeah, yeah they, they Shuhei. He, as we were talking about, yeah, he kind of stepped back in a sense. Yeah, he's the head of the indie division, but they might come to him and say, "Let's, you need to do this," you know. And uh, he'll, you know, he'll pretty much have no choice, you know. So, but isn't PlayStation you know. headquarters like in America now? No, it's in yes. it's in Tokyo. No, the American division. Everybody makes a mistake on this. There is Sony of Japan and Sony of America, just like Nintendo of Japan, Nintendo of America. Yes, the headquarters in America is in California, yeah, in San Francisco area, right? In the Bay Area. But, but I the, thought the, the headquarters the sort of, of Sony and of you know Sony, that owns yes, PlayStation, like, that owns PlayStation. It's that, but still, Carl, but still, guys, it's in Tokyo. So everything comes through Tokyo. Yeah, but I so, still yeah. think like the PlayStation. I think the head head, right? head of yeah, PlayStation like, is in California. Yeah, I, the the parent company head is in Japan, and they answer to Tokyo. That sure, is the way I things I think it would work. make sense to hire someone who in America, right, an American for that position. You obviously you could hire someone from anywhere. I think they need to speak English. I think you know. So, yeah, yeah, but Totoki Song is based in Tokyo. I mean, you know, the well, that's probably why he's the yeah. interim. He's not going to take the position, they're going to fill it with someone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this guy wasn't even in, in America, he well, he had to go yeah. to America. Okay, right? we can we can argue time. corporate structure Ryan, all right? we want, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, Jim Ryan is leaving. Who is going to replace him, you know, in the, in the future? It'll be interesting I mean, to see. I'm available. <laughs> Yeah, Carl. Actually, I'm, everybody, actually, everybody's available at the moment. Yeah. So. <laughs> actually, I've uh, got a job interview quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I could right. take this. You know, I mean, normally it's an Xbox shirt, but I could take this Nintendo shirt off. I could put on a PlayStation logo. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Tiny okay. Games. Let's. I can do it. <laughs> let's move on, guys. So, Star Wars. You know, Jedi Fallen Order. Great game. Jedi Survivor came after it. Great game. Burley can attest to that. Um, you know, we're gonna get a sequel, guys. We're gonna get another one. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a trilogy. What? You know? No yes. way. <laughs> so this is what? from Game a Rant. Trilogy in Star Wars? What what? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, who would have thought, Carl? I mean, <laughs> it's like, yeah. So yeah, we're getting we're getting a we're getting another game. So, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor star Cameron Moynihan seemingly confirmed the third installment in the series during a recent uh, convention appearance. So, yeah, the actor who uh, portrays Cal Kestis in the games recently appeared at Ocala Comic Con in Florida, where he seemingly confirmed that a third game is currently in development. While he remained quiet about any specific details, he said that the project is quote a big undertaking and there have been some conversations so far, but hopefully when all things are said and done, we'll be able to go in and make something really cool End quote. So yeah, I mean, let's talk about this. Uh, Burley, you've, you've played both of these games. I've played both of these games, Carl, you, you played uh, fallen order. Yeah. Uh, where can this go? Without spoiling anything from especially Jedi Survivor, Burley and Carl, where can this third game go? And I mean, what what do you expect when it comes to uh, the mechanics of the game? And, uh, you know, like story wise, I mean, where could they take a third game? Burley, I'll start with you on this one. What do you think? <sighs> It's really, really hard to talk about without kind of doing any kind of spoilers. Because if you've beaten the end of the game, uh, the second one, once you've beaten it, and you know they're set, they set up for the third game. I'll just say that, yeah, and that should shock no, no one, no one, right? <laughs> um, so it's like, yeah, I think they're just uh, how, how how can I word this? Sorry, uh. It's like, well, how far in the future could we go in this third game? 
I mean, I, obviously I there was a time gap between Fallen Order and uh, Jedi Survivor, what, about five years, right? I think there's like a five year gap or so. Yeah. So you, how how much farther would you like to see the third installment go? Well, I think it'll do another time jump, but not five years. I don't think it'll be five years. I think it'll be like a year or two time jump mm -hmm. from where the last one ended. And I have uh, my my thoughts is it could take place near or just after the fall of the empire and return of the Jedi. Okay. Carl, what do you think? He's going to be an old man <laughs> hanging out with Ray. Oh, God, <laughs> you, you'd have to jump a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I really don't know. Cause I, I didn't play the second game. I, I can't even guess where where they would go and i'm the, the star wars timeline is so hard to follow now so mm -hmm. i can't even say like are they does this game get into you know where we are with uh where like rebels was for example i haven't watched rebels so i can't i uh, can't i i can't comment on that that would no be there's no aspect of rebels in this whatsoever but i mean time wise i'd say it's close to the close to that time you know, time frame. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, I mean, I'll yeah, get him to hang out with, uh, you know, someone from Rebels. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I mean, obviously it's going to have the aspect of, you know, this, this second game was about them trying to find another, you know, home. And uh, maybe that just continues. I mean, depending on how the, the story ends in the second game, of course, we won't spoil anything, but that and uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's uh, maybe it doesn't have so much to do with the Empire. Uh, maybe it has to do with like other factions. It could be like how the, the next uh, the Ubisoft uh, Star Wars game is going to be uh, focused on the Outer Rim. And just uh, working through the outer rim and and finding others that have force powers, you know, have you know, uh, like looking and searching for younglings that that have you know certain certain uh, Jedi traits, uh, just like in the in the first game. That's kind of what they were moving towards story wise. Burley, what do you think? Yeah, I could see a bit of that, but this this one, because of events that happen in the second game, you're gonna have a. They're gonna really. I, I'm hoping, really hope, because nothing worse when you have a setup and they never pay it off. Mm -hmm. In certain moments with Cal, and ha having him to reflect about some of his his actions and choices in the second game, mm -hmm. having those come to those come to light and figure out how is he going to deal with that mm -hmm. and whatnot. Okay. Let's, let's move yeah. away from, from story aspects of it, but like game mechanics, I mean, Burley, uh, what are, what are some things about Jedi survivor that you would like to see them improve upon for, uh, the third installment? Uh, and en en enemy variety. <laughs> It is one like the second game adds a few new types, but other than that, it it doesn't add. It didn't have a whole lot, and it just seemed to me of okay. Alrighty, I'll go single lightsaber for this enemy. This one I'll go double, mm -hmm. or the cross guard blade. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would love to see some more force abilities. That be that'd be something like. You got you got a fair amount added to the, se the second game, and your your skill tree was really massive mm -hmm. in, in, in in Jedi Survivor here. So, like, you don't need I, I don't need necessarily a bigger skill tree. Just give me some new yeah. force yeah. force abilities. Yeah, that skill tree, man. I, <laughs> way too many of them. I thought it is it was pretty massive. Oh. Yeah, in Survivor, oh, yeah. it's really massive. I mean, it's like I didn't even I didn't even get through half of them. I mean, it's just yeah. Oh. I, I would I would say leave it the same, but when it comes to all the running and jumping and stuff, I, you know, just give him some kind of ability where he can just 
zip line through everything instead of having to run across walls and stuff so much. You know, I, yeah, like a little I, speeder bike thing. Exactly, little... exactly. Yeah, or something. Yeah, because I mean, it's fun, but then it, it just gets too repetitious as as the oh. game progresses. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, and especially on some of the bigger levels, because like this was a game I was like, I ah, platinum the first game. I'll go back to platinum this, and it's just like yeah. some of these worlds and some of the puzzles of okay, you did it here, now you got to reverse the whole puzzle again and revert. Now re-push things in this direction so you can get the one chest over. Here. It's like, ah, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't we don't need it, more of that. <laughs> you know, it's important to bring up is that the the director of the game, Stieg mm-hmm. Asmussen, he he left. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So there's a bit of concern of of what might happen for the third game because I know a lot of people give him a lot of credit for being you know a good big reason as to why these two were so good so successful yeah Mm -hmm. that that but the majority of those at respawn will continue to work on the third game so whoever they bring in yeah that's important but yeah the 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 core of 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 those that were working on the development of these two games will still be a part of it so i'm excited to see where he lands after this (laughs) yeah yeah or you maybe know Ubisoft. Really... He'll he'll be working. He'll be working on another Star Wars game. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah. you just no, gave you me an idea for, yeah. and the idea for the third game. They cross it over with Titan Tall Two. You get BT. You bring back the Titan, Titan. Fall Two. Burley. Yeah. Titan Fall. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's move over from Jedi Survivor to Cyberpunk because. Looks like uh, 2.0 is uh, is getting some really good reviews. Uh, looks like a lot of people are saying that uh, you know Cyberpunk is now a completely completely different experience now uh, from from when it initially launched. And of course, uh, Phantom Liberty is doing very well. So uh, yeah, everything new in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, so uh, this new update that's out now. So our discussion is going to be about should you jump into this game now? I mean, for those of you that have been just apprehensive because of all of the negative publicity on it and all the bugs and everything from when it first released, you know, there was a lot of people like, oh, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to delve into it. then. So there's a lot of people out there that still haven't even played this game yet. And now with the 2.0 uh, update and now with Phantom Liberty, I mean, is it time to jump in? So let's uh, from uh, gamesradar.com. Let's look at some of the uh, the new, of course, uh, changes to Cyberpunk. Uh, improved police force. So in the first game, it's like the the police were uh, essentially, you know, like just just useless, just walking around. Uh, but now it's like in the 2.0 update, they they basically they'll they'll chase you. And uh, they'll teleport all over the place. So that that is a big improvement. Uh, vehicular combat and quick hacks as you're playing through the game. So uh, the you know using using your automobile and the combat techniques, uh, the camera angles and everything as you're shooting, that's that's changing up a bit. Uh, uh, more revamp perks. Uh, cyberware have been revamped as well as other additional features and changes. Uh, so, uh, for example, clothes are now cosmetic only, uh, your armor is dictated by cyberware, so you can wear whatever outfit you like without missing out on any stat buffs. And there are also new radio, (laughs) new, yeah, new radio stations that have been added, uh, general improvements to combat AI, UI UX tweaks, and much, much more. So guys, what do you think? Uh, do you think uh, those that have played the game should jump back into this again? Carl, Carl, I'll start with you. What do you think, man? I would say 100% because I played Cyberpunk at launch and I still loved it. I think the core of what that game was is still fantastic. It was from the beginning. It was just marred by all of the you know, performance issues and bugs and sort of promises that people like thought a lot of things would be in the game that kind of weren't, you know, I mean, like the police system being something that like, people thought would be more in, in 
wasn't. I mean, I had no idea. Like, I played the game. Like, I didn't know. I didn't. I wasn't following, you know, the game heavily, right? You know, a lot of people were like super into it, and they were they were doing like like you know, dives and like drops of info, talking about the game all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think that was to the detriment of it. Like, just speaking about it too much and setting up these such such incredibly impossible to meet expectations and people just thought this game would do anything and everything <laughs> and yeah that that was unrealistic so uh i'm i'm glad that people are saying all these great things about it and if it's that much improved from what i played then this game you know just game of the year you know yeah yeah burley your thoughts well now it seems from what they're showing uh this is the game they were marketing for the last couple of years because the marketing on this game was really huge. They put a lot into marketing and they promised all this stuff. This is why people like got mad and my, myself included. Cause like when I played it, the first two hours, two, three hours, I was like, this is nowhere near engaging. This, this didn't draw me in and I didn't have any technical issues, but I heard nothing but technical issues from a lot of, friends of mine are playing it and i'm like okay i will just wait till this game gets patched and fixed to what they promised it yeah. seems now they've got it to what they were promising and all the marketing which is good on them but this just needs to be a reminder of wait till games are out before you buy them yeah and don't yeah. don't don't but yeah. and don't believe the marketing crap <laughs> yeah yeah, I'm definitely going to jump back into this now. Yeah, I, I'm really excited for it. So, uh, and and I, and I want to play Phantom Liberty as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, because I was a part of that. That I was I was hyped for it. You know, Keanu Reeves coming on stage and all and stuff. I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, this is this is it. This is the game. I mean, because you know, The Witcher was such a success. You know, Witcher Three and all. And then, and this was heavily promoted. And so I got into it and it's like, yeah, man, there's some really bad bugs and glitches in it. And then, you know, other games started coming out. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to hold off on it for a while. And yeah, now is the time to get back in, I think. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of us hardcore gamers and in the media and stuff, they've gotten back into it and they've really, really enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get back in. Yeah. yeah. This game is a lesson for the industry, um, and, and if you, I think it's good to compare it to Starfield in some ways because Starfield, you know, yeah, it was announced early, but they didn't tell us very much about it at all until mm-hmm. not that far, ahead. and then right. it was delayed. So, like, you know, again, there's that extra time period, but we didn't get once we got the actual deep dive into what that game was mm-hmm. at the Starfield Direct that's what the game is right Mm -hmm. yeah there wasn't any there wasn't any other expectations like i didn't when i played the game like oh it doesn't have this like no that's that was what the game was Mm -hmm. and and that's why a lot of games now a lot of these places now uh, companies wait until pretty far in pretty close to release date to really tell you about their game yeah i mean they pretty much have to because you know the game is not polished enough, you know, to start trying to market it in the early stages of development. So, I mean, they are waiting until it's pretty close to launch to do a direct or to do something like this now. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, but back to what Burley's saying, it's like, just, yeah, don't, don't pre-order games so much. Wait, what? Just, just wait. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, because that it might be a game that uh, you know you kind of feel bad that you put seventy dollars into when it first comes out. You know, so uh, yeah. I mean, it's a talk with your wallet and uh, just uh, just wait. I mean, now would now's the perfect time. I think. That was a perfect time to play it. But I, I understand, you know, it's like the the world we live in now and everybody needs to, especially us content creators, we need to, to jump on top of things and get on it and and and, and review it and play it. Uh, but yeah, those th- that are not content creators and just play for play for the fun of it. I mean, yeah, just wait. Just wait. So, yeah. And it's a busy time, too. I mean, I don't know yeah. that 
a lot of people are going to play now, but, uh, you know, we'll see. So many well, yeah. other things to play. <laughs> so many other things to play, yeah. but I mean, those that have never played it yet, I think this is the perfect time, man. It's the perfect time. So, yeah. And now with, uh, you know, CD Projekt Red, they're, they're pretty much finishing up on this and they're getting into the Witcher 4. So, uh, yeah, that's that'll be interesting to see. But Witcher 4, that ain't coming anytime soon. That's that's, that's a ways <laughs> off, man. That's probably yeah. at least two, the, at least three years off it, I think. So, yeah. Well, let's talk about another game that's out now. Uh, of course, uh, it's out, and there was a big DLC package that came for it called Burning Shores, and now there's a complete edition coming. So Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition coming to PS5 and PC. And that's one of the things that we talked about with Jim Ryan leaving. Now a lot of people are speculating that a lot of these games, a lot of these first party Sony games could come to PC day one now uh, as part of the, the new direction, so to speak, uh, with a new never CEO. Day, day, never day one. You don't think so? <laughs> you don't think never no. day one? Right? Okay, so, I can't. I can't see day one. A year or two later, yeah, I can see. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it seems far off the, the the day one idea, but uh, we could see, you know, yeah, six months to a year time frames. You know, mm -hmm. depending because they're that that's probably what they're, they're going to look at. Like, our when do sales sort of like start petering out, right? Because you got to start discounting the game. In order to get more sales so you can do something like this and you can sell this completed edition and drop it on pc and i don't think this is even full price but i think it's 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 a higher price than this game would be selling right now i would say you know at a discount well this is from the uh this is from the playstation blog i'll go ahead and get into it and the link for you video viewers is below so horizon forbidden west complete edition will be available for 59.99 us dollars uh, 69.99 euro and uh, in Japan uh, not a thing you have that's 7980 yen and it includes Horizon Forbidden West for PS5 Burning Shores DLC for PS5 the digital soundtrack the digital art book Horizon Zero Dawn volume 1 the Sunhawk digital comic book in-game items including extras in photo mode special poses and face paint in-game items unlocked via story progression uh, Karja Behemoth Elite outfit, the Karja Behemoth short bow, Nora Thunder Elite outfit, Nora Thunder sling, Apex cl uh, Claw Strider machine strike piece, and resources pack. So, Burley, is that worth it? Yeah, if you've if you've not picked up the game, I think this is a really good bundle for you because not only are you getting the game, you're getting the the DLC as well as like so, the the basically the pre-order bonuses that they had in the beginning and the art books. Like, I don't know if any of you have looked at the art books for just even the original zero dawn was so good. And the art book for forbidden West was really, really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, if you don't have this game and you've been wanting to play it because this game, unfortunately came out at the wrong time. Oh Not yes, yeah. Well, it, both it, it, of them, both of them came out at the wrong time. Yeah. I mean, what was it, the first one? But you know, Zero Dawn came out when Zelda came out. You know, and then yeah, of course this one came out Zelda. at the same time. Yeah. So. Yeah. That this game unfortunately had come out at the wrong time, but it's nice to see that it's getting a package for not only for people on PS5, but next year, early in the year, they get it for PC because. If I'm not mistaken, Zero Dawn sold well on Steam. And it mm -hmm. was one of the better mm -hmm. Steam ports of the PC games. It wasn't <laughs> Last of Us. Uh. Yeah, right. This is Nixus yeah, so, is the one working on this, right? Yeah. And they, they did work they did uh help on the Spider-Man as well as the Ratchet Clank one. Yeah. So it's like th this this is great. They're the good uh, ones. <laughs> yeah, they're they're the good ones. Yeah. So it's I, even if you're you're on PC, if you played the first game on PC and you really enjoyed it, I can easily recommend it. As long as the if the ports is like the last one, it, it's worth picking up. Mm -hmm. Look, it, it's an attractive package. They're throwing a lot in there. Um, 
I like for me who, who hasn't played the game, like if I was picking up a PlayStation Five this year, like I I get this for sure. Like I want, I do want it. Like I I want to play this game. It's just, you know, you know, you know my 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 life right now. It's just this is like even if I was gonna buy a PlayStation Five, like how would I find the time? Like of all the games I plan and want to play and haven't gotten to play. Yes, Jim, I'll convert him. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they want to hire me to take Jim's job, but then I'll definitely stop everything and play. Well, Carl, there's an easy solution to this. Just does never sleep. Ah, yeah. <laughs> don't sleep. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was it? There was a, like a. Do you remember? I mean, just the other week, I think X Files. Uh, they celebrated like their 25th anniversary or something like that, and there was an episode of X Files where the they were experimenting on soldiers you know and they 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 were programmed to never sleep and so yeah it's like there was this one episode where this guy you know he's he hadn't slept in like 20 years or something like that you know so you want to talk about that it's so a very practical upgrade to to humans uh, yeah yeah if i don't exactly. have to sleep that's that would be very useful <laughs> that would be very useful and very you know uh you know you know time consuming and creative and all that when it comes to video game play yeah let me install yeah. a focus in you carl it'll help and and then you want you wouldn't need spiritual opium anymore right burley <laughs> no you always need that shit that's that's a mandatory <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so yeah, so Horizon uh, Complete Edition. So go go and check it out. Yeah, and Burning Shores is really good as well. So uh, it's a, it's a, it's a great addition to to the franchise. And they've already, of course, you know, the, there's a third game coming. Burley, when do you think we'll get the third installment of Horizon? In another three, four years, maybe. Uh, I think the earliest we would see it. 2026 and that's like the okay so late generation of, yeah late generation yeah late generation is the earliest i could see okay it'd probably be more close to 2027 2028 well it depends on what gorilla games is working on too i mean you know maybe they're only focused on horizon uh, but uh I, i'm Please still be saying focus on horizon dlc and not that stupid ru rumor of we're gonna remake the first game on ps5 well, they might be keeping the, they might be keeping this a, a secret, but I, I still think, man, I mean, because we haven't seen a kill zone game in a long time. So hopefully we could never get another, again. Oh, shut up, Carl. I've never played <laughs> kill zones kill great. Zone Come games. on. And, I've never I mean, played any of them. So they're great. They're them. great. But yeah, I mean and, and they yeah. actually made a good one for Vita a long time ago too, but but girls yeah, I don't got know. Don't know. girls got ideas, man. If they get they come up with a game like this. Just just give me another new IP. Don't go back to the kids. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We shall see. Okay. Well, let's get back to Xbox, and it's interesting because they're making a partnership with Meta. So, uh, yeah, X Xbox Cloud Gaming arrives on MetaQuest this December. So let's let's talk a little bit about this. So, uh, yeah. So this is from IGN. So uh, Microsoft's cloud gaming service will be available on the headsets this December, uh, CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced. So, uh, yeah, I mean, strides in the cloud gaming uh, section for, for Microsoft. Obviously, if you have Game, uh, Game Pass Ultimate, you get the, uh, the Xbox uh, cloud gaming service. Now you're going to be able to get it on the MetaQuest too. So it'll be interesting to see if the Meta Meta users are going to have to pay for the Game Pass subscription. Um, so yeah, we, of course. We, so oh, yeah, 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 we shall see. But uh, yeah, and probably. But what do you, what, Carl? I'll start with you on this one. You know, but what do you think? Uh, so in December, you know, the the MetaQuest three, uh, you know, then the the current MetaQuest. You're gonna have the uh, the X, uh, you know, the Xbox Game Cloud. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think of that, man? Yeah, I mean, this was previously announced. So this is just the official you know, right. timing of when it's coming. Right. right. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's a cool idea. Um, the Meta Quests is, in my opinion, the most attractive VR headset out there. Like, if I was going to buy one, this would be the one I would want. Especially and the Meta Quest Three looks really good. And it's gonna sell for five hundred dollars. Yeah, which you know I think is 
a reasonable thing because it's a self-contained, you know, it's like buying a console. But actually, it's right. even better because you don't need a TV, you know. Right, right. It's all about right. everything. Everything you need is right there for five hundred. Yeah, it's you, right you on your face. And more, that's it. Right. Yeah. A single thing more. Generally, you usually have a TV already, <laughs> you yeah. know. But you know that that is a that is an interesting kind of thing. And to be able to play, you know, the vast majority of Xbox games, obviously, all the first party games are on there, and all mm-hmm. and you know everything else, almost everything that's going to be on Game Pass goes to cloud. Uh, yeah. That's a great library. Uh, just the cloud is in a weird place right now where I think its future is very uncertain. Right. Um, but this adds a, a lot to what you can do on uh, MetaQuest. Yeah. Yeah. Burley, your thoughts? Yeah. $500, yeah. man. MetaQuest 3. You know, and, yeah, 500 and now US, getting the, so like 700 here. 700 Canadian. Yeah. So, I mean, so Xbox Cloud Gaming, you know, uh, being on Meta, what do you think? Yeah, it's it. It's a good win for Meta, and it's a it's an interesting spot for Microsoft to just be like, here you go, we have it on another platform, right? But I don't know how what how much like people that are there that are in the MetaQuest are going to use it so much. Mm-hmm. That that'll be interesting to see the data if we ever get anything on that. Just because it's like you don't have a typical controller; you've got the two little hand things. Right. the meta like i i've not used the meta any of the meta quests right. and i i do agree with carl they are the more attractive for the vr especially yeah, the pricing because yeah. valve is insane how much they want theirs yeah. so it's like yeah, yeah no <laughs> well the question i mean the question i have is what kind of gaming lineup does the meta have you know besides the the xbox cloud gaming that's going to be coming to it um just all uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a launch oh. lineup for the for the three, and, and yeah. the vast majority of VR games out there are on mm-hmm. on Quest, right? That's that's yeah. the platform okay. yeah. that that okay. most of them are really targeting, and the ones that are the higher end get better versions <laughs> of those games, like so my, VR, you know. Oftentimes. So my so my question is, with that lineup of games that Quest is already going to have, is this going to be appealing to? you know, the MetaQuest users that would most likely have to pay another $17 a month for a Game Pass Ultimate subscription to be able to play these games. Yeah, I think that's hard to say because I don't know any MetaQuest owners or even even anybody yeah, really that's, into Yeah, that's VR. a big question, yeah. Like but how this see, will do. Yeah. If I had to guess, I would say that beyond the VR, right, because VR is why you're buying this generally, yeah. right? None of this is VR. So, but this adds a huge library of other things for you to play with. So, like, if you are someone who wants more to play and you've got your VR, a couple of VR games here and there, and you're like, what else do I play? Right. Well, I mean, you can play Starfield if, you, if you're really interested in that, right? You could play yeah. their biggest games. On here, so. That would be cool, to, interesting to see what it looks like on a MetaQuest 3, uh, Starfield. I mean, playing mm-hmm. Starfield on there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, getting a getting a real close face to face look at Andresia or or Sarah or you know <laughs> that would be really cool. You know, it's like like you're actually you know right standing right next to her talking to her. You know, and then of course you know and, and then Burley, you know, as he said last week, you know, you know what is the status of our relationship? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm excited. Uh, this is a uh, this is a good pairing, uh, you know, uh, Meta and uh, and Xbox working together to get this deal done. So, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and move on, guys. So uh, next up, so let me go ahead and uh, get this off here. So next up, let's go ahead and get into our topic of the show. And obviously, we're going to be talking about historical settings in games. So with the imminent release of Assassin's Creed Mirage set in 9th century Baghdad, which is interesting because uh, in this one article that I'm going to show you, uh, or not, not that one, I'm sorry, uh, the one about uh, historical settings uh, from Games Radar, uh, they talk about uh, a lot of historians, I mean, were so you know, uh, fascinated uh, with uh, 
Ubisoft Bordeaux and how they worked on this game. And there wasn't much historically to go by because Baghdad was basically destroyed by the Mongols in the 13th century, right? So there wasn't really much to go on. But uh, working with the historians and all, they were able to piece together some really, really awesome, you know, uh, bits and pieces of Baghdad in this historical uh, atmosphere for this game, uh, which really amazed the historians and all. Uh, so in the article, it's interesting. It's like uh, it says one of the historians that the team worked closely with when researching their recreation of Baghdad was Dr. Ali O. Alomi, a historian of Middle East and Islamic history, who is assistant professor of history at Loyola Marymount University and the host of uh, Head on History, a podcast on Islamic intellectual history. When the team finally had the opportunity uh, at uh, Ubisoft Bordeaux to show Dr. Olomi around Mirage's Baghdad for the first time, uh, Salah said he was, quote, like a kid, end quote. And he almost came to tears with how realistic the city looked. So let's talk about historical settings in games. And obviously, I'm really excited for this. Uh, of the three of us, I'm the biggest Assassin's Creed fan. Uh, of course, I am a historian by trade. Uh, you know, I, you know, I have a master's degree in Japanese history. I, I love history. Uh, I love to play these games because of of the the areas that you can uh, you can view and you can go through uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, for example, going through you know uh, Paris, you know 18th century Paris. I mean, uh, of course, going through Notre Dame, uh, which obviously Notre Dame is being reconstructed because of the fires that happened you know a few years back. Um, playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag and going through uh, Havana. That was really beautiful. Uh, going through, of course, Origins and Ancient Egypt. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, obviously. Uh, Ancient Greece. I mean, these historical settings so, look so realistic. And I'm really excited to see what 9th century Baghdad looks like. Obviously, they're going back to the origins of the series because... You know, the, the the first game was focused, uh, centered on, uh, you know, uh, Istanbul uh, at that time. Uh, so I'll throw it to you guys. What are some games that you played that had amazing historical settings in them uh, that, that you really uh, love to play? Um, Carl, I'll start with you. Uh, let's see. So I guess there's more recent examples that I thought of, which, uh, was Expeditions Rome. Okay. Uh, which was, you know, really great uh, turn-based uh, tactical RPG. It was PC only. Uh, and this is, I'm trying to look it up, you know, what, what era, you know, this was, but, uh, I didn't really find that right away. Um, but, it, you know, it is obviously a historical setting. You know, all the games that they made, these expedition games, were historical mm -hmm. settings. Yeah. Um, then there's Pentiment. Okay. Uh, fairly recently, which is mm -hmm. which is an interesting, unique type of game from Obsidian. Uh, I was on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, that That's 16th century. It's a fictional town, but the events of the game, it, it's around historical era that time mm -hmm. period and i think is that i don't know if it's germany or around there uh and then the other one of course crusader kings 3 which i mean i i love that 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 game i thought it was incredible the simulation you know style of choosing you can choose a lot a couple of different eras in this game yeah yeah um let me see what it says here 867, 1066. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it goes all the way up to 1453, apparently, mm -hmm. the years that you can play through. And how did you, you how, play, right? I was going to say, how, what did you think of the Plague Tale games and those settings, uh, you know, oh. from the, when, come, when it came to the, uh, the, 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 the Black Plague and, and the Inquisition era? Mm -hmm. I yeah, thought those were really cool. another good one. Yeah. Yeah. Burley, uh, your thoughts? You took one of mine was actually going to be the first Plague Tale game. I think that mm -hmm. really did a really it 
good job and immersed you in the world and you felt like you were in that time period. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know one, you're going to get a little mad about (laughs) because it's not fully (laughs) historical. Stop stop where you are. Uh, Yeah. 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 Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. but, it, but it is a historical setting, it, you know. <laughs> it is a historical setting. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, yeah they they made the Kamakura Jidai look like uh, Kamakura era look like the, you know, the the late uh, Muramachi, you know, era. But oh well, yeah, yeah. It, it at is, least it, it is really cool. Yeah, at least not like Assassin's Creed Origins where you have a dragon chasing you on a period. Pure event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit much. Yeah, 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 yeah that was. But, but we're just talking about settings, mm-hmm. Burley. We're not mm-hmm. talking about gameplay mechanics and gameplay stuff. Sure. Like Origin, that, you know, but... Origins is another good one. I, I really enjoy Origins that one. is amazing. I mean, all and, the Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. games, obviously. But... Well, if you have not played the Assassin's Creed game, so it I... sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but but the city though, the city of London mm-hmm. in that game looks really good. Yeah. Uh, I I mean. Uh-huh. I highly recommend Origins and Odyssey because they have the, the the DLC. Basically, it's a part of the game where it's a historical tour. And they added that to Valhalla also. I mean, these historical tours, it takes you throughout the city. Uh, it shows you what life was like in those times uh, of ancient Egypt and of ancient Greece. Uh, just it, They are amazing bits of the game that... If you're really into history and you, you want to learn something about that time period and that part of the world, it's a it's a great thing to uh, to explore. So uh, Origins and Odyssey, I highly recommend the uh, historical tours in those. And Valhalla's is very good as well. So so I'm sure there's going to be a historical tour of Baghdad in Mirage. I, I can I I'll bet you guys. Five cases of spiritual opium on this. I, 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 I'm sure that there's going to be uh, a historical tour of Baghdad. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see because, like I said at the beginning of this topic, that they didn't have much to go by because the whole city was leveled. The Mongols just completely destroyed it. You know, it was just, it was gone. And so historians have worked for years to try to, you know, get bits and pieces of it, you know, uh, to, to focus on. So they should remaster Unity mm-hmm. and and add the uh, the historical mode to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really sure. Good. Yeah, yeah, Burley. But uh, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, it's. I mean, <laughs> it, it, just for me. I mean, little nitpicky things. I mean, like the armor. The armor was like, <laughs> yeah, a few a few hundred years, uh, you know, out of date. Uh, when it came to, you know, the particular time period, I mean, they they were wearing they were wearing armor like from the 15th, 16th century in that game, where the game was supposed to be focused on the 12th, 12th century. So, but yeah, that, I mean, if if you're not a historian at all, I mean, and you're just into video games and play video games, you're not going to catch that. So, you know, that's, you know, but uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, going back to the the you know the early type of games uh, for for Assassin's Creed, going back to a lot of the stealthy elements of the games. Uh, really, really excited for it. So, and it's not going to be it's not going to be a 200 hour adventure. Yeah, uh, where it, it's basically going to be about a 20 hour game. Which is which is great because like I I jump back in with Valhalla and Valhalla, you can like the game all you want, but you cannot defend that story being the bloated mess it was. It just and repeating the same kind of missions over and over again, it yeah. just it became very repetitive. This going back to the basics and being like, okay, you can actually assassinate people, not be. Okay, you're level five. He's level seven, so he's too high level for you to right, assassinate. Right, right. Like that. Yeah. That's yeah. That, that 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 was a stupid. Like you could change yeah. it in the settings, but it was like it's a stupid mechanic. Yeah, and you might get lucky, you know. But yeah, it's, yeah they, they this here showing this cool chain setting yeah, up these cool. chains of assassination. 
She's like, this is awesome. They made it an action RPG, and I don't know. I feel like they forced that to happen, and it it took away a lot of what the franchise was. And and yeah, obviously, like with by the time they got to Syndicate, it was stale, and that wasn't the best example anymore. So mm -hmm. I get why they made a big change, but happy to go back. And what I'm really liking about this, and and they discuss this in the in the article, it's like what you do in the city what you do like in the investigations uh, or like assassination zones it will have an impact on the entire city so not okay. just on you but it's going to have an impact on the entire city of what you're doing so yeah it'll be interesting to see so okay so having a dishonored mechanic which is yeah which is always good by me yeah yeah so yeah, all these little markets here that we see. Yeah, that's, I just, yeah, I'm so excited for this. And so, yeah, and of course, the eagle and all that again, you know, so the, the eagle eye focus and stuff like that. So, yeah, excited for it, man. Assassin's Creed Mirage comes out on the 5th. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So, lots of great games and uh, historical settings. So, uh, yeah, great stuff. All right. So now it's time to get into the new game releases uh, from uh, releases.com. So every week, of course, uh, we give our picks of the week. So you can check out uh, the upcoming releases at releases.com. The link is below for you. And so this week, uh, October 2nd through the 8th, uh, we're going to uh, now discuss our picks of the week. And uh, Carl, you are up first. So what is your pick of the week? I chose the Lamplighters League. Mm -hmm. This is coming to PC, oh, it says PS5 and Xbox Series X on October 3rd. I didn't even realize it was PS5 version. <clears throat> But, uh, okay, sneak, steal, and shoot your way through a world of pulp adventure in the Lamplighters League. Globe trot across a variety of exciting locales around the world and outweigh your enemies in strategic turn-based combat. And if you play your cards right, you might just save the world. Harebrained schemes, the creators of the Shadowrun trilogy and Battletech bring you an all-new world set in an alternate 1930s where a tyrannical cult called the Banished Court stands on the cusp of world domination. For millennia, all that stood between the sinister cabal and their plans were a band of heroic scholars known as the Lamplighters League. And this is on launching into Game Pass. Uh, the uh, the reviews there are reviews out. Uh, I will bring up, and uh, it looks like it's around the sevens or so range. And some of the some of the reasons are that particularly the Xbox version and the console versions, I guess, are are not quite as good. Uh, they got they got some issues with them, um, bugs, performance things. So, uh, but from what it sounds, it does sound like it's an interesting world and characters and stories and mm -hmm. you know the type of gameplay I love. So, yeah, I do want to give it a try. I might wait a little bit till I hear they do some updates, patch out some of the, the stuff that's going on. But mm -hmm. if I get a chance, I have some time. I might I might just boot it up and take a look. All right. The Lamplighters League. All right. I am up next. I think, yes. So, obviously, as we talked about in the topic of the show, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage comes out on October 8th. So, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit of this for you. So, in the 9th century CE, Baghdad is at its height, leading the world in science, art, innovation, and commerce. Amid its bustling urban lands landscape, a conflicted young orphan with a tragic past must navigate the streets to survive. In Assassin's Creed Mirage, you are Bassam, a cunning street thief with nightmarish visions uh, seeking answers and justice. After an act of deadly retribution, Bassam flees Baghdad and joins an ancient organization, the Hidden Ones. As he learns their mysterious rituals and powerful tenets, he will hone his unique abilities, discover his true nature, and come to understand a new creed, one that will change his fate in ways he never could have imagined. Comes out on October 5th, and it comes out on uh, 
PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. So yeah, excited, man. Another another Assassin's Creed game. So it's it's not the one that everybody is looking forward to, the one that's going to be in Japan, which probably won't be coming for another couple of years. But yeah, Assassin's Creed Mirage. So good stuff. I guess you could look forward to the Japan one to actually get the history right. Because <laughs> they seem to always do it. Well, things. yes, yes. Especially yeah, the setting. Yeah. When it comes to story, I don't think so. But setting, yes. Uh, I'm, well, I'm really I mean, excited for yeah, that. Yeah. It's a sort of fictional story around historical events. Yeah. Well, what era are they going to put it in, though? I, I would, yeah, I would I love yet. to see Meiji era. That would be the best. Because Meiji era in Japan is the transitional period between, you know, medieval times and industrialization. And obviously, you know, the setting, you know, industrialization starting to take hold in Japan. And you have the Templars that are trying to control it, you know, things like that. That would be amazing. That would be an awesome story. So we should have the time that. period in the, the anime, uh, Kenshin, Hironi Kenshin. Uh, I think so, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, but I really yeah. like that that time period in that anime. So, yeah. OK, Burley, what do you got for us? You're up next. Uh, my my pick of the week is Wargroove 2. Wargroove is back. Embark on an all new adventure filled with unlikely friendships, unknown adversaries and ugly revenge plots. Wage war against your foes with a cast of new commanders and utilize their new tiered groove ability system to Sway the fight in your favor. So it is coming Thursday, October 5th to PC and Switch. I really enjoyed the first game. I played it on the Steam Deck. It was just a, it's a very fun game. Mm -hmm. Especially if you are into your turn-based uh, tactical strategy RPGs. I highly, highly recommend the first one. Mm -hmm. And adding some new stuff with the sequel can't wait mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's good stuff man yeah that's uh, i always wanted to play the first one i just never had uh, gotten around to it Hi highly recommend it's good on the switch too this this is uh that's similar to advance wars that sort of style but it's you know fantasy setting. yes yeah all right, so those have been our picks of the week. You could go to releases.com for all of you video viewers. The link is below, release, releases.com for the month of October and beyond. So, yeah, those were our picks for the week of October 2nd through the 8th. So each week we do a pick of the week. So, yeah, so go check out releases.com. Next up, Burley, PS Plus, PS yeah. Plus October. And I have to say this. Now, I'm going to show the image for this. In Japan, Callisto Protocol is banned. Mm -hmm. You cannot yeah. you cannot buy Callisto Protocol out here in Japan because of its intense violence and graphic nature. It was banned by the ratings board. You cannot buy it here. So on the Japanese PlayStation Plus side for October, you cannot get Callisto Protocol, but you can get Tropico 5. <laughs> That weird, is your that weird is substitution. Your weird substitution by far, yes. Uh, but uh, yeah. So go ahead, Burley. Uh, what what can you out in the West look forward to for P PlayStation Plus? So, well, you, you mentioned it, Callisto Protocol to PS5, and PS4. But what's interesting is this game isn't even a year old. It's a year old in December. This is how bad this game flopped. As, yeah. and, the lead, as the and the lead. That, and the lead director is leaving. Yeah, left. Yes, I think. Yeah, know. and they, they 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 lost some members. Of the studio, some other members either left yeah. or, I think yeah. they had some cuts as well. Like this game did not do well, and the DLC did not help that that came out this year. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to try it, uh, go ahead and try. But in all honesty, I even haven't played it yet. But I've heard the Dead Space remake was very very good. Well, yeah, I'd recommend trying that out compared to this uh you've also got farming simulator 2022 ps4 ps5 and weird west for uh, ps4 ps5 which is one i have been meaning to try so it's nice to have that 
Yeah, this this yeah. was just not this, this was not a good month. Like the farming simulator is fine to have up on there because those are always there are people for those. Yeah. This is it's not yeah. it's not for me, but it's it's a not right. a bad title. But it's like to do this increased and this is the first one after this PS PS plus increased. And it's like, yeah, we got Callisto Protocol. And I, I hate to say it, anyone that wanted to play this game, I think has already played it or has heard when the negative reviews were coming out of it for this game. So it's like, yeah, we have to have something horror themed. I rather would would have seen them do, hey, here's Little Nightmares 1 and 2. Give yeah. us some indie yeah. horror games. Yeah. Or yeah. Or maybe, you know, like the Resident Evil Village or something like that again or something. Yeah. So put the, the, oh, the, the they wouldn't put Village. It'd probably be like two or three remakes. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, a Resident Evil title. But yeah. Yeah. It is, you know, like Farming Simulator, there is an audience for that. Um, uh, but I don't think that's PS Plus essential, <laughs> you know? Is is really well, the people looking for that type of game? Um, well, they're, Weird they're, West. They're, Sorry, yeah, go ahead. That they're, they're they've always done these simulator games, and they're always they are popular because people will be like, "Oh, I'll just wait a year or two, and it'll be on PS Plus." So you get people I know that are like yeah. that. Yeah, and Game Pass does a lot of the simulators too. It's just mm -hmm. I think that it works better for like a, a sort of wider audience than like. The essential, right, is sort of like the casual who's like, I need it for online, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but Weird West, I highly recommend. Like I played yeah, a great, decent yeah. amount of it. I, I wanted to play more. I just never yeah. wanted to go back to it at the time. Yeah. Uh, and they did an HD sort of, well, like it's sort of like a next gen sort of boost to it. I assume that's included because it is the PS4, PS5. Yeah. Um, so yeah, check that out. That's a cool game. Yeah, and for all of our Japanese listeners and viewers out here, uh, I'll just say this: If you want to play Callisto Protocol, create a create a Western account, create a U.S. account, cre create a Canadian account, or something like that, and then then you can play the game. You just download it digitally and play it. I mean, it, yeah, I mean the horror genre. I mean, and obviously the you know the, the when it comes to the Dead Space series, you know the creators, you know. You know created the dead space series so i mean uh i think you'll like it but it's yeah I, unfortunately the japanese market anything which really really amazes me because resident evil is available out here but callisto yeah, protocol what, is not right? what uh, is the difference well, there is no difference because it's made because it's made out there because Capcom yeah. um, is a Japanese studio. That is that is that one reason. Fair. But when it comes to the blood and gore, I mean, yeah, the Callisto Protocol. There's yeah, there's a lot of it. You know, it's so. It's definitely yeah, gore. Just, yeah, yeah. But I like, just, is Mortal Kombat banned in Japan? No. That's the goriest game out there. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's. I don't know, man. It's it, it's the the ratings board here. They have their own. You know, they have their own. There must be something specific ways that of doing things. Maybe yeah. we're missing. I'm sure it's listed somewhere. Yeah, but just create a Western account, create a U.S. account, create a Canadian account, and then you can download it and play it. So there are ways. There are ways around the system. So you can you can do that if you want. So use Burley's account. Yeah, you <laughs> use Burley's account. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Carl. But then you'd have to pay like probably ten, twenty, thirty dollars extra to, to play the game. <laughs> you know, uh, compared to the U.S. account, maybe. Yeah, right. It's yeah. true. All right, let's move on. Game Pass, Carl. Uh, what are we getting in October? So Game Pass. All right, we got October later. list. This is known titles, and we'll get. The actual announced there'll be a couple more i'm sure on tuesday the third we should get more but uh october so we have gotham knights coming october 3rd yeah uh the, the lamplighters league october 3rd my pick of the week warhammer 40k dark time is finally finally getting the xbox version to come out on october 4th yeah. uh, that came out late last year uh forza motorsport is coming on october 10th which mm -hmm. good i do want to try that again time i don't know if i'll have it but i do want to try 
Uh, then City Skyline 2, actually, uh, I believe this will be still on PC Game Pass, but the console version of this game is delayed. Uh, so that's October 24th for PC. Mm -hmm. Then Minico's Night Market, October 26th. Headbangers, Rhythm Royale, October 31st, and Jusant on October 31st. <laughs> Carl, you have a, a cat issue. It sounds know, it's like it. <laughs> The cat's Irish messing naughty. with the cords or met, messing with something because it's affecting the audio. Yeah. So. Oh, was well, yeah. Okay. She she's rubbing on. Yeah, this. you can hear like that boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So yeah. I was worried she was gonna like you know knock the cord out or something. Yeah, I guess I guess the, your your cat doesn't like the lineup for for Xbox Game Pass so far. It's like where is Stray? <laughs> this is nonsense. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Gotham Knights, though, man. Gotham Knights, yeah. Finally, it, well, it's coming to Game Pass. So those of you who have not played it, yeah, you can give it a try. Yeah, so uh, getting back into Gotham. So I recommend cool. doing cloud. Don't install. <laughs> you want to try it. As a guy that personally bought this game, uh -huh. it was not. It was not a good game. <laughs> okay, I think it's a good get. Like I, I yeah. want to try yeah. it. Me too. I still, despite yeah. reviews, like I do want to try it. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of it, it. It's kind of like the Guardians of the Galaxy you get, except that one was a better game, you know. Yeah, infinitely better. Well, speaking of a better game, and it's you know turn-based and uh, indie in uh, in nature. Uh, of course, uh, moving on to our programming notes. Obviously, Burley and I we did a Arena Extra Take, which uh, is. Uh, goes up in early access to our Patreon, but it, it has now gone public to the free feeds. Our gameplay review of Sea of Stars. Go check that out. Uh, sea of Stars is such a great game and uh, loved talking about it. And uh, Burley had some gameplay footage and we talked about it and we gave our review of that particular uh, title, which uh, in most likelihood uh, has, a, I think, a really strong possibility of winning RPG of the Year. Uh, most likely indie game of the year for sure, and could be uh, a contender for game of the year as well. So go check out Sea of Stars, our gameplay review, uh, of course, here on the, the YouTube channel. And of course, uh, it's on our Patreon as well. Uh, I'm going to spoil Burley's review. He gave it 10 out of 10 tin bits. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, to watch, you will see, see my score, and I think I do a good job of picking the score i did and why <laughs> yeah let's yeah. all say you gotta watch the video that's right that's right and for our entertainment and pop culture related videos uh i put up our uh, star wars ahsoka uh episode seven dreams and madness recap and review so go and check that out guys we have one more episode of ahsoka next week so uh really looking forward to that and seeing how that turns out so please go and check out uh my episode seven review of that and on the star trek side star trek lower decks season four episode five <laughs> empathological fallacies uh, our recap and review of that and man i mean i am so glad that they you know that they put talin in here i mean this was this was focused on talin the the new the new vulcan girl character uh female character i, I just i just love this character and the, the episode centers around her in this one. It's so funny. Uh, please go and check out the recap and review of empathological fallacies. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, in, in some, some ways there are fallacies when it comes to uh, our emotional, you know, uh, in control. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, it's a great episode, so go and check it out. So. And we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash the arena productions, where you can see all of our content. Uh, gaming related, entertainment and pop culture related. Uh, our extra take, which we did our Sea of Stars, uh, goes uh, went up, and uh, the extra take episodes go up in early access, two days early access, over on our Patreon. And all of our content is ad free over there, and our post shows are exclusive to the Patreon as well as our tier two. We have uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, and Marvel. Uh, monthly news updates those are exclusive also to our uh patreon so uh patreon.com slash the arena productions please go and check it out 
So yeah, great stuff over on our Patreon. Yes. All right, guys. So, uh, what are you guys going to be playing this coming week? Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to focus on Cocoon. So, uh, Cocoon, oh, yeah. uh, that that game that, that just came out, it's on Game Pass. Uh, I'm going to check that out. Um, and then uh, on October fifth, Assassin's Creed Mirage. I'm going to jump into that and hopefully have some comments about the game next week. Carl, how about you? I know I know your schedule's crazy and all, but what are you going to try to jump into this week uh i mean sea of stars seems like the thing for me right now you know okay. it's easy to just jump on Do just jump on the xbox real quick <laughs> pop it up play a little bit you know make some progress you know. uh-huh. i just got that new character uh i guess it's the first character you get after the original trio uh, mm-hmm. so that's cool okay nice burly how about you uh, for me, well, I'm going to be starting up a because it'll be next week, har- hor- uh, October. So I'm yep. starting up a little Spooktober. Small, yeah. Spooktober. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be starting up Choo Choo Charles and probably finish that. And depending of how long that takes me, might be starting up the Dead Space remake. For my cool. for the Japanese viewers, maybe I should play Callisto Protocol on stream early. Yeah. <laughs> so. You, yeah, you can I mean, do that if you want. Again. If you want to, tor- yeah. if you want to, if you want to torture yourself, then go right ahead. No, it's not torture. I mean, honestly, I, I liked Callisto Protocol. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's got its flaws and all, but you know, it's got the the elements of Dead Space in it and stuff. So, because Dead Space is one of my favorite games of all time. So, yeah, right, Burley got a choice. You got to play either Callisto Protocol or Gotham Knights. Which one are you choosing? Ooh, good question, Carl. <laughs> Ooh. Good question. Sophie's uh, t- <laughs> <laughs> no, why, why don't we just make this even easier? Add Gollum to the mix. And, uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Probably it's not worst. that bad. Come on. Oh. Like, oh. I, yeah. I probably I probably choose Gotham because there there is a little bit more there that like and I could do multiplayer to just carry me through. Okay. And like, if you set, if, if you know what you're doing with Gotham Knights, you can break the game. Callisto, I just found, besides the whole dodge mechanic, like most of the weapons suck. Uh, <laughs> the game will other break o- you. O- other other than that stun bat, the stun bat, you just upgrade that. Don't focus on upgrading your guns. Your guns are pretty useless <laughs> in that game. <laughs> no, no, seriously, if you play it. Yeah. The guns are quite useless. You're mm-hmm. you're best to put your energy into the bat. Yeah. It's like yeah. All right. Well, anyway, so let us know in the comments what what you thought of uh, the stories we talked about today. So, uh, what do you think of uh, of Jim Ryan's departure from PlayStation? What do you think about, uh, of course, the the Cyberpunk 2.0 update? Uh, if you're playing it right now, uh, what do you think of that? Uh, Xbox uh, Cloud Gaming coming to the Meta, Meta Quest 3. Uh, what do you think of all of that? Uh, and uh, historical settings and games. Uh, what is your favorite uh, game with uh, amazing historical settings? Let us know in the comments uh, You know uh, what you think of some of those things. So we're really uh, uh, looking forward to hearing from you here. So, so thank you so much. And uh, of course, if you like this episode, uh, please be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. For when we drop another episode of the Arena Multi-Platform Gaming News Podcast, along with all of our other content here on the Arena Production. We thank you all, uh, all of you viewers and listeners for all of your support. So thank you so much for uh, being a part of this with us. So, of course, to end the show, every week we have an indie recording artist spotlight where we uh, spotlight a particular indie recording artist and have a music outro uh, with our games that we show. So this week's spotlight is on Bamtone. The music of Bamtone has been featured on a long list of TV series and has been included in music libraries from Canada to Germany. A graduate of the Percussion Institute of Technology in Hollywood, California, he writes in an indie folk style and incorporates elements of the rock and singer-songwriter genres to create a moving style and sound. Primarily a vocalist, drummer, and guitarist, 
Bamtone is also an accomplished uh, multi-instrumentalist who records most of the tracks in his songs. From his base in Toronto, he travels and performs worldwide. From his album titled Secret Mountain, and the song is called Slow Burn. So this has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, episode 147. I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbase Carl. We hope to catch you in the next one next week. So take care, everyone, and enjoy the outro. Peace out.